Welcome to the Blueprint Podcast, where the blueprint to understanding a new and unified world is in our shifting consciousness. Now here are your hosts, Angela Blaha and Velia Person. Hey, welcome. How are you, Velia? I'm doing good, Angela. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> We're okay. cracking up. This whole right before you push the record button, we start talking about something and laughing. So when you guys hear us jump on here, it's because she's pressed the record and we're laughing about something else. <laughs> so we're excited to announce that we're going to start doing lives for you guys to be able to jump on and ask us any questions you may have as we're sharing a little more about this blueprint and what's going on. So um, we agreed on that this morning. Yay! So we'll be able to see and hopefully see see each of you um, and have you guys jump on and ask questions because we know what the things that are happening and, and how are changing. It's important for you guys to know that you do have the support. We're not just somebody on the screen, that we are here to kind of guide you and, and um, just share experiences that we're, we're actually going through to make it a little more relatable for you and fun for us. How's that? <laughs> Sounds perfect. What, we're here. We, what are we talking about today, Angela? Let us know. So we are talking about what happens when or why and when, when you don't feel connected or you go into hermit mode, which, you know, is a lot of people are experiencing that right now. Um, mm -hmm. And so we want to kind of explain like why that's actually happening and, you know, that it's okay to be like that. So Belia, why don't you start us off with um, what it's like to not feel connected? Like it's, it's a real thing. Right. And it's funny because I think that we may believe it's kind of not connected, but I think that we need to disconnect in order to become more observers of what's happening in, in life and not so much consume with what we have going on. So last couple of weeks, I went on vacation. I still saw clients and everything on my days, but I noticed that I was observing the world more, just people's behaviors, you know, what, what it is that they do on a daily or how it is that they feel about life in general. And I got to hear a lot of conversations, right? And people have their own issues going on. That's great. But it just kind of became louder and I kind of just sat still. And since then, it's been a couple of weeks, I've been kind of in hermit mode where I sit and I just kind of want to sleep and stay in bed and not go anywhere. And the reason why I want to share it is because some people can confuse that as going through a moment of depression, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that's the case. So I want to come along and just kind of share my personal experiences because everything that's happening right now, we're going to go into a little bit more. It's like things are falling apart but I don't feel like I'm falling apart. I feel fine. I'm like neutral. I'm kind of just kind of ready for whatever happens. So I was, I've been very connected to myself and where I'm at right now, not thinking too far ahead about what's going to happen or all that good stuff. And so for a lot of people, I know that they're kind of in two spots. Angela, we talked about this. We have the ones that have like, you know, we're going to call them like ADHD symptoms where you're hyper, you have too many tabs open, you're running around and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. And you're just feeling that this need to hurry up and do something all the time, but you're not finishing tasks. And then we have the other side of people that are very just, you know, promoting self-care, just chillaxing. Like I was telling Angela this morning that I went as far as like, I have a morning routine where I have like my lemon water and some seeds or whatever. And I'm like, I don't feel like getting up in the morning to do that if I don't have to. So I started prepping it at night and putting it in a thermos and literally got like a little chair and tray and put it on the side of my bed. And I'm laughing because I thought, one, the, the previous me would have thought you're just being lazy. But I'm like, no, I'm creating my life. So I don't have to get out of my bed if I don't want to, but I'm still going to do my daily routine. But if I don't, I'll beat myself for, up for it later, right? But it's gotten to a point where if I want to watch something, I watch it. If I don't, I don't. I can sit there and stare at my wall. I can stare at my ceiling. Um, I'm learning a little bit about how, you know, governments or the powers that be are going to start manipulating humanity even more. Mm -hmm. And one could be like, that's a distraction. But if I don't know what I'm up against or what I'm helping humanity face and overcome, then I can't really help. That's just my belief system, right? So I'm kind of getting an idea of the things they're going to try to do to trick humanity, um, how they're going to play on people's emotions. And then so we're talking about this feeling of me just kind of being in hermit mode and not really wanting to do anything and saying, okay, some people would believe something's wrong with them. But I want to let you know that it's kind of a reset preparation mode to get you ready for the things that are going to come. So if you are experiencing what you might call laziness or lack of motivation, 
but you're still interested in what's happening, then you're in a good place. It's okay. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Well, I think we talked a bit about this, you know, the last couple episodes where we talked about dropping off the old records. And when we do do that, you know, like we, we drop off these old patterns, these old belief systems, you know, all of this kind of thing, there's, there's a space that can be, you know, we can cram it full of something, which, which is what some people are doing. They're cramming it, right. trying to cram it full, which gives you the ADHD sort of symptoms, or they, they move into a space like you are that is like, Oh, I'm just going to be the observer here and not really, but I'm going to learn at the same time. I'm going to understand things at a deeper level. Um, and it, it really pulls you into sort of a, I don't think niche is the right word, but it gives you the visual of what a yeah. niche is, you know, it pulls you more into a alignment with your own soul self. And I think that that's where we are in the consciousness right now. And in moving forward, um, you know, we need to niche down. We need to get rid of, push up those tabs that we talked about the last two episodes of, you know, that to that's, really activating and aggravating the nervous system. Um, and, you know, what's the opposite of that, of course, because we're still living in a duality is what maybe you're experiencing, which is, you know, extreme calmness and, you know, peace and, you know, just observing here. So we are kind of at opposites, I want to say with our energy systems right now, especially the nervous system is um, being recalculated, I feel. Yeah. Um, you know, but the last couple of years being so super lonely, being, you know, confined and all that kind of thing has sort of prepared us for where we are right now. Um, so we shouldn't really have fear about any of that. But like you said, you know, really understanding at a deeper level, mind manipulation, how, how fear is going to be a tactic, it's been a tactic and how it's even going to get bigger and more dramatic. Um so those kinds of things are important to really understand and what triggers you inside, you know, like, you know, is the nervous system really overactive and are, are you expressing, you know, sort of that hyperness um, and are you playing into that field or are you stepping back and saying, no, I'm just going to observe this stuff and watch how people react and respond. Um, and then that's going to give me information about who I am and what I need to do. So so let's talk a little bit about why we are in this space right now, this sort of extremes of hyperactivity or I don't want to call it no activity because there is, but it's just a very <laughs> calm activity, right? Yeah. Um, um, so why would why are we having this kind of thing? Well, it's because the old tree of life has been dismantled. Now yeah. what, right? Now it's like, oh, <laughs> wait, what's happened? <laughs> I want to bring up on how that is going to relate to us. Um, and there are some people like when we started finding out that the old tree is going, it was going to be dismantled at this time. It was going to be, it's completely gone now. Right. Um, there was kind of fear around, well, what does that mean? We didn't understand what that meant. Like, what do you mean? Like, well, basically the old way of doing things is dying out. And we shared a little bit about how that worked. Why well, it's completely dead now. So if you are those people, if you have experienced the fear of going back to old ways, I think that there's a barrier now, Angela, is what I'm seeing a lot with myself, my clients, whatever, people that ask questions is like, they've done a lot of healing and they'll go back into maybe a habit that they were into a while back and they start having this fear around, they're like, oh my God, I don't want to go back. It's like, even if you wanted to, you just can't go back anymore, right? So there's a safety net in place. I'm going to use that. There's a safety net in place where you really can't go back to doing what you did because the energies are not going to support it. And it's very similar to how in the past we've talked about, Angela, how there is no more like survival energy that is all thriving now. And the system, this dismantling of this tree has made it so... In fact, we do have more support, but it's a brand new way of being. So if you are between these two, I'm doing too much and I'm feeling overwhelmed and not feeling like you're doing anything at all, it's because what we're supposed to do is, is being created right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, I was like, what is this? What is this? For a little bit, I was kind of wondering what this is. Like, oh, I'm kind of, it's a waiting game. I'm waiting to see what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I felt a little antsy, like I should be doing more a few weeks ago. And I just kind of got this revelation that just shared, shared, told me, just keep doing what you're doing. You don't have to do more of anything. You don't have to do extra of anything. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I'm thinking, well, that might not be enough. In the past, I would have thought that it's not enough. 
But I have this calm feeling about like, I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. And whenever my assignment shows up or whatever I'm supposed to be doing is created, then I'll jump on the bandwagon. But in the meantime, it's kind of like a refueling place, right? I'm kind of sitting and just getting ready for whatever it is that looks like. So if you have this fear around, I'm going backwards, mm, you can't go backwards anymore. There is no backwards to go back to. It's literally been dismantled. Right. So let's talk a little bit about what the tree of life is. Like it's, it's basically an archetype, right? That's been actually used to sort of describe this sort of heaven and the underworld or hell kind of mentality. Um, and it's been, but it's used in a gazillion disciplines, right? Like biology uses it, sociology, mm -hmm. psychology uses it, religions, philosophy, history even uses a tree of life. Um, you know, genealogies use it for sure. So I'm, I'm going to say that we've been exposed, at least exposed to what a tree of life would be, right? But what happens when we are shifting a consciousness and the archetype has like literally disappeared, <laughs> right? right. Along, along with almost everything else, you know, and then, and then we talked about going through these, this death vortex and what that means, you know, like you sort of come out on the other side with a clean energy system, um, you know, but we know that the tree of life, the new tree of life, for example, is one that is going to unify the whole mentality or theory of heaven and the underworld, right? Like there's a more unified state being created here. And so, you know, that's pretty much, I want to say the basis, unless you have something else to add of what a tree of life is. And so, you know, what have you noticed about yourself other than this really calm sense of being that you have? Um, with the disappearance, because, you know, we sort of have insider information, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> about when, it, when things are dismantled and when, dark, when things are getting created. So, so what have you noticed? I mean, was there like, did, was there a, an abrupt energy shift or, you know, like walk people through your experience with this dismantling? Yeah. It's funny because when you say abrupt, it's like, no, it kind of, it was a transition period where, I mean, I've shared, I've shared that in the past, I was a real big scaredy cat, you know, and I still have a lot of tendencies that come in, but I noticed that it was more of a state of confusion, Angela, for me, where, you know, whatever I would think about or worry or panic or be bored about, like, cause that was something that you and I had in common. Like there was times that we were just so bored. Like, what do we do now? Like, how, how do we do this? And it just kind of felt like an uphill battle all the time. And now it's kind of like, I've gotten permission to be like, sit down, like step aside. We're going to break through whatever this is. And then when we're ready for you, we're going to come back and get you. And that's the best way I can explain it. But there was a lot of confusion because when you're used to being a certain way and you're trying to maintain this whatever way of being or what do we do next and how do we mm -hmm. help you? Now? I felt kind of bored and felt like it was going nowhere. And now I've got like this whole renewed sense of existence, right? even though it was confusing at first, because how do you go from like, just trying to kind of keep up and do whatever to just telling you, someone telling you to sit down and calm down. And we're going to tell you, like, we'll call you when we need you. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I was confused. And I think that people are going through this, you know, because when you're healing, you're in there, you're being triggered and shadow work and all that. You're just busy. You're just busy. Right. Cause you want to heal and get better. And when it, it didn't stop abruptly, but it was kind of like a, you can sit, you can take a seat now. Like, you don't have to worry about clearing up all this karma anymore. You don't have to worry about trying to save all these people anymore. We're going to create a way that when people are ready and whoever is ready, we're going to just have it make it second nature. And that's what it feels like. Because I know with myself and a lot of the clients that, I, that I've been you know, sharing this experience with, we're going through this whole like, oh, I just don't feel like doing anything. Like, oh, I just feel like resting or I just feel like taking a nap. Whereas before it's like, what do I do? What do I research? Where do I grow? What do I do? And like, it, I saw it kind of like a domino effect with myself and everybody else. And I'm like, holy crap, we're all going through this together. So I think what's happening is that we're not even going to have to try so hard. I think that a lot of the work that we did, Angela, is literally catching up with all of us where we're giving, we're, we've been given permission to just sit and wait. And I think that for a lot of people, one is confusing. One, you don't know how to act because you've just never sat and waited before. And so I think that that might be, the, the, I don't even want to say the struggle. That's what I'm saying. It's so weird because in the past, I would have had trouble with it. Like I just shared with you yesterday, 
that me being just calm and not having ideas to write down or things to create has been nice. And so before I would have a download and, okay, I have to create a program for this. I have to create this and I have to tell my clients this and I got to do a podcast on that. And it was just kind of like sitting away and I'm like, what the heck? But I like it because we're so used to like next, 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 do, do, do. And I believe that this new reality, this new world that we're creating is going to be a sit down and just be. And so I believe they're giving us, giving them, uh, giving us a taste of that right now. And I like it. That's awesome. I like it a lot. I'm still at the boredom stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have the messages of just wait. I have uh, a majority of my clients are the ones who have the activated ADHD going on, you know, too many tabs open. Um, but I, what I've noticed is this really, really deep healing of old, old, old patterns. Um, like really deep stuff, like things that would not normally come up unless I was doing hypnosis or, you know, some sort of really deep transformation. Um, but, but that's what I've noticed with my clients is like, they have these extremes of healings going on. Um, so which, you know, most of my clients do have very activated nervous systems um, and which is playing right into this portion of it right so we're both the extremes here I love it <laughs> always always happens yeah. um but also what I've also noticed is the change in intuition and the connection I want to say that the that my clients have been having with their own intuition and following and trusting themselves like that is the deepest part I think that has uh, come to surface um and it's very, very quick. That's the other thing is like, it's very, very quick. There is this melding of the mind and the heart where your intuitiveness is just really going to combine both of those things. Um, and so that's, that I think is a big shift for a good portion of people is this, like, there's going to be a logic and, and, and a f emotion and, but it's not going to be swayed one way or the other. So you, so you're, when your intuition is coming in, it's actual trusting it because you're not swayed by emotions or you're not swayed by logic, right? So there's a real, there's a change in the depth of intuition is what I'm finding. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been in this hermit mode and this morning I had to go live on my podcast and literally like 15 minutes before I'm like, oh, I got to put my lipstick on or coat my hair. Like I'm just so, cause I'm just like leave me alone mode, right? But I love this. So I'm like, why am I feeling this way? I didn't question it. 10, 15 minutes, I'm still putting all my stuff and I come and sit at my desk and then it's like, go live. Blah, 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 blah. And like all the information, just I'm like, oh, shit, I had knew what topic I was going to talk about. But I was literally feeling like, I don't want to go on and talk to people on feeling this way. Like it's just super neutral, super calm. But that's confirmation of what you just said is like, we have to just trust it. Mm -hmm. If you've already got the hold on, wait, whatever, whatever, like instead mm -hmm. of being weirded out about it, like I would normally do, maybe that has a lot to do with, you know, the old tree. And we're going to talk about what might be more confusing as well is I literally just showed up. I showed up, I clicked live, smiled, talked about the weather and the information just came in. Right. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is what they're talking about. Prepare your way in such a, prepare yourself in such a way that whatever you're supposed to do, you're going to do it because everything's going to be heightened. So like Angela said, all the lower vibration emotions that we used to feel and, and be ruled by or whatever, mm -hmm. all those, are being, they're just dropping off, you guys. So as long as you stay focused on you and what you need to do, your intuition is going to come in. And because you don't have all the, that doubt coming in, you're going to just go with it. And it's a very natural thing. Like I didn't, I wasn't even worried about it. I was kind of like, oh, I'm dreading this and I should. But as soon as I started talking to Angela, I could remember situations that was about kids and emotions this morning. And like when I was at the school and I talked to so like stuff was just coming and I'm like, wait, I just trust mm -hmm. it and grab it and go. And, you know, I had a lot of messages come in. Thank you so much. Maybe to hear that. Oh my gosh. I was just thinking about that. And I'm like, oh, that. so it aligns with what we're supposed to be doing if we stop overthinking, but even those overthinkers, you're going to notice you can't overthink anymore. There is a death in those patterns and, and for some people, like we were just talking last week about how even the ancestors are confused about what's happening. They're confused. It's kind yeah. of what happened. We used to be able to do this. and now we can't. So if our ancestors, you guys, 
we're confused. We're going to go through that transformation period as well, where it's okay to be confused. But I just think it's a pause, like an interruption to make you aware that something's changing. And then it just dissipates. It goes away. And the knowing and the trusting and the loving is going to come in more naturally without as many distractions as you've had it now. So those people that are going through like this ADHD experience, I had shared with you, my clients went through that phase back in like November, December. And this is why I was called to the organization modules and get people organized and declutter and get rid of your stuff, because that was part of what we needed to do to get to this like calm, I think. And everybody's going to be prepared and whatever at a certain time nobody's better than anybody. It's just all groups can go through it at the same time. There's groups going to different things and whatever you're experiencing, we're going to jump over here and go over there. So there is no like first place, second place. It's just kind of like this weird stuff that needs to happen. And then who knows what's going to happen next? I have no clue and I'm so okay with it. I don't know what, how I'm going to feel tomorrow. But we talked about astrologically, a lot of stuff happening too, right? And that plays a role in our behaviors and our thought process. And we were talking about Saturn coming into Pisces and what that looks like, the Pluto returns happening on the 23rd. And this is going to be like the holy crap. Let's get it together and trust yourself so much in such a way that no matter what crap happens on the outside, you just stay centered on you because then you can help yourself and other people. Yeah, for sure. Fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know, you talked about how last um, November, December, like you had the ADHD. I, we, I, I want to say a good portion of my clients had the calm, you know. Oh. And so, you know, so, you know, when what you said that like there's nobody ahead of each other, there's just different um, times of experience. That has changed, right? We're not in the hierarchy any longer. We're more in this unified state, and it's just a matter of when your um, when your experience happens, it's when you're ready for it to happen. Like there's no like there's like you can feel that. I think we can feel that that hierarchy um, has really dissipated, even though it's in the big picture of the world. It's still right. trying to be very <laughs> constructed. Um, yes. But, you know, you can sort of sense that even with just general, your friends or, you know, groups of people that you hang out with or clients or whatever, like that whole sense of the extremes of hierarchy, um, like they just don't even, they're just, there's no energy for them and they just really don't even exist any longer. So it's, that's, that's also very exciting for me. And I'm more of a, um, let's look at the future and see what's, about to come so that I can help clients in that way mm -hmm. um, because you know there's no reason for us to get super excited about it um, there is good reason though for us to understand our understand ourselves so well that we don't actually buy in or play into the fear mongering that is about to come and you know next week is a, a big energy week and mm -hmm. which is why we're going live I think probably <laughs> next week <laughs> Yeah, we are so going to be there for you guys. Live yeah. And I think and we're talking about it's so important for you guys to have that, you know, again, we're not just somebody on the screen, we're actually going through this in real time. Um, and you know, I love what you mentioned, Angela, when it talks about how we're, we're all like kind of in different places. There was companies that would work for and I hope that this, you guys can relate to this, like, even though I was going like, say, when I was younger, went to like a customer service position, this company literally had me shadow everybody the people that were out of the field from, from the time that they created something to the packaging and delivering and everything. Right. And I love that I was able to shadow everybody and what they did because it made me a better representative because I knew what was going outside of my phone calls. Right. And so I think that this is kind of what's happening right now too, is like us kind of all being in different places. We're all kind of getting to see what everybody else is going to do. So there's no like this hierarchy that you're referring to, right? It's kind of like we're all going to kind of have our hands in these pots and be able to either problem solve or figure things out through our old ex own experiences or the ones that are coming. And when we talk about how, like, I remember I was sharing with you a couple of weeks ago, like we have a group, Angela and I were talking to a couple of other people that had been going through these activations or whatever. And I felt like, oh my God, but if my clients have a question, like, I feel bad that I won't be able to answer them. And I remember I was getting really antsy and upset about that because I had no further information. And I remember having this dream that let me know that if it's good enough for you to not know what's happening next, is it not good enough for your clients? 
And I heard that, Angela, my heart just dropped. And that was just confirmation that we all need to trust the process. And I was caught up with like, oh my gosh, but I'm the leader. I should be able to, because I've always been able to see steps ahead, right? So with this, it's like, we're just getting revealed things to us as we need to have them revealed to us. So I got really antsy for a minute thinking I wasn't going to be of service to the people. Like, how am I going to tell them what's next? I can't foresee whatever. And when I got that dream, you know, it was kind of like, what, if it's good enough for you, Vede, to trust the process, why can't it be good enough for your clients, for them? And I was like, holy crap. So this empowerment was just kind of like, let me step back because it's not about what I need to do and be the leader and help people and make it, you know, the blow softer for them. It wasn't about that. Even then they told me, sit down and just wait. And that's just brand new to me. It's totally brand new. And so in that, I've learned so much about myself as well. When these ancestors, and all the stuff was happening with the ancestors, Angela, and we talked about how a lot of old modalities are no longer valid. And so I have a health center and there's some people that are doing old modalities and still kind of 3D, 4D, 5D stuff, whatever. And I started to feel convicted over, oh my gosh, these things aren't even valid anymore. Like we're going in a way and all this stuff, whatever. And also that same night I had this dream because I went to bed asking for these things to be revealed to me. Like give me peace about what's happening. I don't want to feel antsy. I don't want to feel like I'm not going to be able to lead people. Like just give me something. And I remember like back in the day when I was going to church, um, I never believed that my religion was the right one, that my belief system was the only one that was going to work, that everybody else was wrong. So in this vision, I call them dreams, but we all know they're not really dreams. Um, I got this, you know, again, confirmation, like how do I support all these people or how do I keep encouraging all these things if they're no longer valid? And also I heard this, you know, I don't hear them audible, but it's just this knowing that says, you've never, you've never been one to think that yours was always just the right way. What if people still need these avenues to get to where we're going? And I felt my heart just so heavy and I was so grateful because the conviction went away. I'm saying some people still need these channels. They still need to do the things that let's say are outdated, right? And we'll see how long the energy supports that because I believe that's going to fade away as well. But if that's something that people still need to find us or to find this unification way of being, to find this bridge, then those modalities are going to be used to reach those people, to help them jump on because it's familiar to them to bring in, you, know, you, you can't say, hey, uh, nobody's heard about 5D and we're talking about 22nd dimension. They're like, what the hell happened to the rest of them, right? Because we were like that, like, what the hell? Where? So yeah, there's a lot of ancient stuff or modalities or whatever that are going to be used. Again, how long the energy supports it, we don't know. So I think that's why Angela and I are so eager to get on here and share with you guys to be like, hey, whatever feels right, trust yourself. The biggest thing is to be able to trust yourself in such a way that when crap starts going down, you guys, we're going to be fine. We have to know that we know that we know that no matter what happens, we're going to be fine because we're not depending on the government to take care of us. We're not comparing on, we're not depending on these finances or whatever. Like we just know that whatever we need is going to be brought to us as long as we're staying aligned with the things that we're supposed to do. And the biggest goal for us is for you guys to understand what you're supposed to be doing right now and how you're aligning to that. And I made a joke this morning because I told Angela, like in human design, my role is literally I'm a role model hermit. And so I'm laughing that I'm a hermit, but I'm 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 like, yeah, Angela, but I'm completely aligned with my design because I wrote my role model when I have to. And then I also hermit when I need to. Right. And we're cracking up. But how, how fun is it to be able to say that I'm in alignment, you know, and every day, obviously, it, it's a different task every day or, or maybe it's the same as the day before. But we have to choose to be aligned with it. And if we're not, then things fall apart for us. And so when we know that, we're more apt to stay aligned with what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So so I'm, I'm going to say that it, even though we may feel like we're not connected, I'm going to say we're connected in a whole different way because that's really what happened with me was like, you know, I was used to receiving all my information through um, my knowing and my ability to see movies and projecting, kind, you know, projector kind of energy forms. Um, and I would hear sometimes, but, you know, I primarily relied on my knowing and, and the visuals that I would get. Um, now, those are very different. Like, I still have those abilities, but they've, they've combined you know, like everything comes in one kind of a connection now. 
So even though we don't feel like we're connected and we don't, we, we just don't have the old ways to access information anymore. You know, we don't get the information through photon light anymore. For example, we get through the information through the neutrinos. Um, and so of course those are going to just, you know, neutrinos just pass right through you. So they're just going to drop you a bomb and then they're going <laughs> to leave. They're, it's not like they're going to stay within you any longer, you know? And so energy is like a, it's a whole different ball game now. And so I think that that's where we may feel disconnected or not as deeply connected, but I'm going to say it's just changing the way that we are connected is just changing. And so, you know, for some of us, it's like activating the nervous system. And for some of us, it's calming the nervous system. And we really need to, like you said, you know, accept what what's happening here and, Okay, I'm going to change that. So it's not necessarily accept what's happening out there in the world, but accept what's happening within you because you're moving closer and closer into alignment with your soul self and the reason and the purpose that you are here for this shift in consciousness. So, you know, it's important. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I, I think that because, I mean, even me knowing what I knew, I was kind of like, something's wrong with me. How am I still feeling whatever? They're like, no, nothing's wrong with you. It helped to have like this list of questions that I asked myself, right? It was kind of, okay, back in the day, if this was something bad, it would kind of feel like this, or you would think that. You're just feeling that right now. You're, you're experiencing this right now, but how do you feel? Like, how's your health? How's your marriage? How's, you know, how's your kid? How's your home? How's how's life? How is the love that you do for, for what you do? Like my the love of seeing my clients, well, that hasn't changed. Well, it's just different. So before you think you're going crazy or you're going backwards or you're thinking it's a bad thing, assess your situation. Is everything? different are you still content like I'm so happy for coming home and just like seeing my crystal like I'm like oh my god it brings me happiness so I haven't spiraled into like depression or whatever it's not bad because I still have all those you know those not just the emotions but the thoughts of like gratitude and I'm happy and my life is good and I just want more of what I have so ask yourself the questions don't just default to like something's wrong with me or like I don't know what this is I really do think it's preparing and I, and I, I don't want to say an army because it's not like we're fighting, but I really think that, you know, Angela and I always had this vision of like creating this army, we used to call it, of just people that were so passionate and asked questions and healed and wanted answers, like just this whole new dynamic. And I really think that that's what's being created right now. The only difference is, Angela, is that we're not working as hard as we thought we were going to have to. Because we have like all this support and through the neutrinos and galactic, you know, federations and councils, like we're going to go more into that, you know, but there's so much support that I'm actually shocked that I'm not working as hard as I thought I was supposed to Angela. And I think that that was another thing that kind of like messed with me a little bit because I'm like, you can't make this easy. It can't. And it's like, why did we not design our lives in a way where it was supposed to be easy? where we're kind of just doing our part and then there's all these reinforcements coming in. And that's when I say, I think we already did all the work and now everything we've done is kind of literally being manifested in front of us. Our job is to figure out how to be when we don't have to work so hard because that's awkward for some people, right? Yeah. We need to sit. Well, <laughs> that alone makes your nervous system activated, right? Like yeah. that gives you like anxiety because it's like, wait, I don't have to do all these things now. You know, and I think that that's where like for us, like we've both been so bored in life um, because we know that there's other things that are available, but we maybe pulling them into this consciousness is not the right moment in time to actually do that because someone will use it to destroy something. Um, but, you know, where is I going with that? Knowing that, that, you know, that this, I think that that some can sometimes play into the boredom, right? Like when we get our nervous system gets activated and we're like, wait, I can't do, I can't do stuff anymore. I just have to be, what does being mean? You know? So you have to like really define that for yourself. What is a being, you know, if you're a human being here and you're moving into creation components, what does that equal? And yeah. doing is not the only option any longer <laughs> action steps. Yes. But doing it all. No. Yeah. 
I love how you touched on sometimes we're not supposed to know things because they could be misused. Mm -hmm. And we had even talked about like, what do we talk about here or not talk about? So the information doesn't get used or manipulated by somebody else. And I think that's the precaution. Like when we were trying to figure out what's next, what's next, and we didn't get answers, it was definitely not, we know it was a protection thing. Like they are not releasing information because they don't want it to get into the wrong hands. And so for us, being okay with accepting that but we're not going to do it yeah but if you guys know that means the cat's out of the bag and then we can't like they have to keep something secret right while they're developing and creating these things but I think that we were having a hard time kind of like being okay with it because we didn't like we mentioned earlier having like more information and but it taught us both to just be more patient with not having to work so hard with not having to know with not having to fix it for other people right so even that was you know growing pains for Angela and I like we're still experiencing some of those things but we were like why we should know and this and how do we help people and like we just started getting angry about it and I think you and I both were kind of had that moment where like you know what we just need to be the same way we're going to teach people to be okay with what's coming we also need to be okay with what's happening of course while we're still trying to grow and learn and heal but there was this sense of like again sit down and just wait <laughs> well I think that you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because I think that there was, um, we were still trying to do things the old way, right? Like get information and then, you know, you sort of tell people how to, well, you get information for people and then you tell them like, this is probably the best avenue. But in this, I think that what, what I came to understand was I already have the information. <laughs> I'm just yeah. not reading it correctly. Right. Like, exactly. I'm just like, I'm like, it's no more out there. It's a hundred percent, hundred, actually 200% in here. <laughs> and this is how we're working through the process. Like, so the information, I, I want to say it's just always there. The information is always there. It's uh, the ability to read it and to understand it in a whole different arena or whole, whole different language. Um, yeah. And and that is what is getting built right now is the connection, that bridge between the old language and the new language and being able to understand, you know, having the heart and the mind come together to understand the new process or the new way of being um, is where the extreme frustration came in for me. But, you know, again, there's it's a different way of operating here. It really is a different way. And. Um, it's okay to get angry about it and it's okay to demand things because when I did demand things, things opened up. Um, so, you know, if you're experiencing that as well, go ahead and demand whatever it is that you want for yourself. Don't demand it for the entire world though, because that's not yeah. going to happen. Love it. Love how you share that. Cause sometimes we'll get that dual demanding and we're thinking everybody else needs to be on this. No, mm -hmm. that's where we make that mistake. If you want it, you go ahead and ask for it. You live it and do what you got to do. But don't expect other people to jump on the bandwagon because everybody's got their own to do and their own timing. And, you know, it's funny, even now, Angela, like we're getting information. Like you said, we already have it in us. And what's not in us right now is going to be accessible really, really soon. And there's mm -hmm. this timing happening. Like we all just experience, you know, there's like a new mantra that came in that shared with us that we're going to be receiving information differently in our brain like it was even so like, oh, like say, say you received information like here before, right? According to the old ways of being whatever. Now, literally we're notified that, hey, from now on, it's going to be part coming. You're going to be receiving information from this part of the brain. And I'm like, what the heck does that have to do with anything? Well, here we are, you know, in our, our background in psychology and counseling, whatever. And it's like, how funny how they even paid attention to the small details. Like, hey, before you used to receive information here and you processed it like that. Now you're going to receive information through this part of the brain right? And Angela keeps talking about the nervous system because it's literally getting discombobulated for a lot of people. But I, I honestly look at it, Angela, like deep clean, right? Like when you go to deep clean something, you guys, it always looks crappier before it looks better, right? You clean your kitchen, you think, oh, this crap, right? Oh my gosh. But I think with people's nervous system, and what's happening is it's being decluttered from stuff that isn't working because the channels of communication are going to be different. The way we process things is going to be very different. When we execute things, it's going to be different. So it makes sense that the nervous system, the brain, and everything is being rewired, reconstructed. So it's going through like this deep cleaning is what's happening for us to get ready to live more simple lives. And at first I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to be hard to learn. No, the how-to is going to be downloaded automatically. I'm like, what? 
what? Okay. So I think that's when I got more peace about it. Like, okay, your, your nervous system is going to be all jacked up, but this is the way it used to be, whatever, whatever in your brain. And now it's kind of like, we have to go and recreate the way things were done to align you with the, the higher purpose that's coming, right? Your new assignments. And so your brain and nervous system, we talk about the brain, heart, they're all connected, you guys, brain, heart, nervous, all connected, but humanity thinks it's disconnected. So they do things differently. So we're actually being set up um, anatomically, anatomic, I can't say the word, in our anatomy, you guys, we're being set up in a way where communication is going to be so clear, so freaking clear, you guys, but they have to make room for it. So what we've known, even that, you guys, is kind of being dismantled so it could be recreated in a way where our knowing is going to just be like this. Our intuition is like this. The information comes in like this. And I made jokes about it when Angela and I were talking about how we're going to have like this monthly download coming in, monthly information. And I'm like, fine, as long as I get the user manual downloaded, then I'm down because I don't want to have to figure out how to use these new okay. gifts. And we just experienced this a couple of weeks ago where we got like these downloads um, these monthly download packages, whatever. And we're like, oh, 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 and then we were fine a few days later, you know, but it was our first time experiencing these monthly downloads. And so I know that we've kind of already been, um, I'm not going to say messed with, but that's the word that comes to mind is like our systems are already being rewired in such a way where it's going to be no brain, literally. Yeah. And the heart, the spirit, the heart, the nervous system and the brain, it's all going to be aligned the way it was always designed to be. We yeah. just moved. Right. So you know how in the past, if you were intuitive, you literally had uh, these rituals where you would receive information. You know how that column thingy is and you go all the way down through your body. Well, there's no vertical. Like that was a vertical download. That was a vertical information channel. That does not exist anymore. That's what I've noticed about my own intuition changing the most it's not mm -hmm. that I don't get movies and the the whole playing out of a scene any longer. It's that it's, there was a projection, right? And so my whole thing was like, I would see it visually, hear it, feel it, you know, experience it, but it would be in front of me. Now I'm inside the movie, yeah. you know? And that's, that's what we're talking about when we're, we're talking about this whole heart mind thing is being combined it's not like the whole heart mind thing is not like it used to be. There was right. still a vertical uh, experience with that heart mind combination before. Now it's very like horizontal. Like there's like this, like you're just, you're involved in the center of it. And it, there's, there's not that hierarchy that we talked about, you know, like it not being, having any energy well that's that's really what it is like there is no hierarchy there's no vertical information of um you know like heaven and belongs up here and you know the underworld is down there no it's all like right here and this is what this is the language i think that that we need to um i think this is what happens with the nervous system when it goes from a vertical to a very horizontal is like there's a calming effect for you and there's probably a real activation effect for others. And so, so you know, the, the whole cleaning out of the nervous system, yes. Um, but it also has to experience the direct opposite of what you normally are. And so then, you know, in order to bring it from a vertical stance into a horizontal stance, there has to be, you know, you have to bring it all together. So you're going to, of course, experience the opposites that you yep. normally are or that you've been working towards, which again, it just, it's like, that's the language that's, you know, we're, we're not talking about verbal language here. I don't think at least that's not been my experience other than using a few different words. Um, it's all about the language of the body, the language of the spirit, like all of this sort of coming together unification, like, yeah, it's been a great theory, but how do you actually create a unification, you know? Well, when you're creating it within yourself, like, it's unification, <laughs> you know? Like, there's a whole, it's a whole different thing. And that, I think, is where um, people right now, in my, in our experiences with our clients and ourselves, is like, okay, what does that actually look like? What does that actually mean for me? What is that actually going to, like, how am I actually going to do that and be that in the future? Um, and so, 
you know, that I think that's where we're getting, I think that's where we feel disconnected um, is in that sort of transition that we're actually going through right now. And it's, you know, figuring it out and understanding it so that we can actually move forward in it. I think that's where we are. For sure. It's very similar. Like we talk about things being dismantled, right? Like the tree being dismantled or beliefs. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that we have to be dismantled with it, right? Even though it sounds horrible to say us, but you're right. Like we, we literally have to dismantle all these things that we've absorbed. Like we talk about this information, but our belief systems have been absorbed. Like you're just submerging yourself in water and it, you know, your skin's your biggest organ and it absorbs everything it's around. And this is what Angela's talking about. Then the knowing is very different, you guys, but we had to have been dismantled through our old ways of being in order for us to bring in this new information. Deciphering is a beautiful thing, but diversity, you know, while we're going through this stuff, we're learning so many different things like I always encourage people to, to understand other other people's belief systems but how can you have conversations with them if you don't understand where they come from and the way we're being rebuilt just the same way there's going to be new tree a new tree that's being created with new information whatever we're also that old tree we're also that new tree you guys so we're going through all these things at first I was like what the hell are they happening but I'm like well duh if that has to be dismantled and that's what I've known then duh we're also that tree and so the dismantling isn't fun because you have a lot of questions, but like I mentioned, the information we get now, how we get it and how it comes in and through you guys, it's very different. It's literally something that just happens second nature now. We don't have to think about it. Whereas before we were worried about, oh my gosh, but am I going to be able to still be of service? And I can't see, and what about our clients? And what about us? And whatever. And it's kind of like, just wait. And then all of a sudden, Angela's like, oh my gosh, my freaking intuition's off the chain. Like she was just kind of like making those comments. And I'm like, oh my gosh, mine too. So you go through this whole, like, what the heck is happening, right? Like she said, you still have those words. And normally it's WTF, the acronym. <laughs> You're just kind of like, what the, you know? But if we are okay with allowing ourselves to experience new things, knowing it's going to be better in the end, the transition period is a lot easier and faster. And I'm seeing that with my clients. They're not taking as long as I did. They're not um, experiencing the in-betweens. And so again, with this new creation of what's happening, you guys, we are the new creation. We are the old tree. We were the old tree. We are this new tree. And we're all just on this process. And I love how they mentioned we're all going to be ready at different times because how, how beautiful is that, Angela, that we're going to be able to pull each other in and out of situations. And we're all just working together for this beautiful you know, new world of unification and, you know, where there is no longer that manipulation and control, but we've allowed ourselves to let go of all the things that we held, you know, as, as at one point as that this is just the way we are and that's it. And it's kind of, no, we're all changing because we are going through this detoxification process to be, you know, in this beautiful new place where we finally make it. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. me too working through the process is way different than I think any, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that we brought um, this type of information in with us. I think it's been, we've been working at this building of this bridge from one world to another world um, for uh, many years. And do we have time to um, bring up some, one other option? Sure. Dive in. So the other option that I've been seeing a lot of are um, the awakening of the people who are coming from the future to actually help with the energies and the transition that humans are literally going through right now. And so, you know, um, like just within the last week, I think I've met three new people in my life who are like, can you help me understand this and what's happening with me? And I'm like, okay, you're from the future you're bringing in this information you're dropping off this code for humanity and and they're all like um yes that's exactly right <laughs> you know they have this sense of knowing about it but yet they can't really put it all together because they didn't bring you know all the all of the timelines together they brought their timeline from the future and here we are combining all the timelines to build the unified world and so what I'm doing is just sort of like exploring and helping them figure out the rest of the timelines. And so, but I want to say that that is not a third option that I'm seeing besides the very calm people, the very anxious people. And then there's this other group of people that are like, 
what the hell is this? What, what am I doing here? Um, and so, you know, I think that some people knew that a long time ago, but I, there's a huge awakening that's happening right now for a lot of those people that are like, hmm, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> And you see how we all have to work together because a lot of us, we're, we're going to call them codes, puzzle pieces, whatever. The piece that you guys have, we don't have. The piece that they have, like they don't have, we have. So we all have to work together. And I love the way the energies are being set up where it's kind of like we're all going to work together. It's not every man for themselves, you guys. It's everybody working together. And this is why it's so important when we talk about alignment and trusting or whatever, because we are all part of a bigger picture. And even if we can't see the full picture right now, I'm asking people to focus on the creation of what they want that picture to look like. Whenever you're bored, whenever you feel like you need to be doing something or whatever, focus on the new world you're creating. What does it look like? Where do you live? What is humanity like? Like, And then we all just get excited about it. Like, that's what I do. That's my go-to, Angela, when I feel like, oh my gosh, what can whatever? I just start thinking about where am I going to live? Who's going to be there? What am I going to be doing for a living? No one's going to meet me anymore. Like, what am I going to be doing? Do we even have to? My One of our girls asked like, oh, is it going to be like a chicken and chicken? Like here is my, for my chicken. Like, why do we even have to eat in this new world? So I get excited just thinking about what that's going to look like. So if confusion comes in, if upset, anger, whatever, you guys, honestly validate your emotions and then kind of swap it with, what kind of world would you create? Like if you had this magic wand and you can draft all these beautiful things, what would it look like? And I promise you there will be no regrets in focusing your energy there because I truly believe that that gets manifested for us. Yeah. You know, and I think this is where we have, um, the other option to that is like, I don't necessarily do the viewing, picturing like you do. I say, okay, if I'm going to create a new world, like, what is it that I really want in that world, right? Sustainability, respect, um, instant knowing for the self and really being connected, like deeply connected. Like those are my visualizations of who I want to be in the future and, and how I would want, what I would want for humanity. Um, and so, you know, there's lots of different ways to go at this. And I don't think that we, that there's one, there's only one way, definitely not, but, you know, really start to ask yourself if there was a, a new world, when we create the new world, yeah. as we're creating the new world, there you go, as, uh -huh. what is it that we really want? Because this is where manifestation is like super powerful is when we're creating something new. And this is what creation is. You know, you're literally creating a new world. It's not an upgrade of a phone. This is a new world. What are the components? What are the what are the psychological personality issues that you want, right? That you really want in a new world. Like right. this is this isn't surfacey kind of things, even though you know a big mansion by the water is yes, that's sure. totally where I want to be. <laughs> sure, that's fine. But, you, know, <laughs> you know, it's in this, it's a beautiful thing, you guys, because time isn't linear, right? Time's forever existing. So if you're doing that for the new world, how much more is your current world going to change for you? Mm -hmm. Your state of gratitude, you're allowing yourself to explore, to express, your now world starts changing as well. So you can start changing your now world while you're creating your new world. Mm -hmm. And that to me is amazing because if I can work once and it, you know, it, it has a ripple effect on everything around me, sign me up. Right. We were just talking about it this morning. Like I'll go live on my podcast and it goes to like five different places and I have to just talk once. And I'm like, see, that's the kind of world I'm talking about, too. Like if I get to create my new world right now, my current world, you guys, is getting better and better um, as I'm focusing on my yes now moment, but also giving energy to the new world I want to create. And guess what? Simultaneously, they're working together anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yay. Fun stuff. Yes, for sure. Okay, we do have to mention that we would love for you to um, share our information with everyone that you know, because I think that we are, we're pretty well into the new world here now. And, you know, we really, we want to help as many people through the process as we possibly can. Um, and the other thing is, if you need help, we do have programs available. Um, and so, you know, be looking at those on our websites as well. So, yeah. 
For sure. Fun stuff. So we're excited to be on here live next week on the 23rd. I'm going to, I'm going to say that. So we have the accountability 23rd, right? I'm like, make sure, make sure you got the right day. We're going to be going live every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. And we are going to go live on YouTube, Facebook, and a couple of other places. And we'll keep you guys updated on that. But look for us here. We'll be here 11 o'clock next Thursday on Facebook or YouTube. That's Let us know if you have any 11, questions. That's 11 a.m. Pacific oh, yeah. time. Sorry, I forget about that. <laughs> yeah. Time. Sorry. So, yeah. No problem. We figure it out with the time zones. But Angela's yeah. two hours ahead of me. So, my 11 is her one. So, Pacific Center time, 11 a.m., We'll put those on the description for this video, Angela, so they have that information. Yeah. Love you guys. Have an amazing week. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being with us today. To find out more about Angela, visit her website at www.angelablaha.com. To find out more about Velia, please visit her website at www.coachvelia.com.